The Morbid Anatomy Library in Gowanus, Brooklyn offers an eye-opening look at the intersection of art, medicine, death and culture. To take a tour of the place, we're meeting with founder Joanna Ebenstein. Joanna, how did the library get started? Well, in 2007, I did a photo exhibition called Anatomical Theatre, which was kind of a photo survey of medical museums around the world. So I ended up starting a blog called Morbid Anatomy. Then a few years later, the studio space became available and I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll just move all of my books and artifacts related to the project there and make them available to the public to see. Have you always been interested in these medical oddities and, and artifacts of death? I've always really loved animals and I've loved them dead or alive. And my dad, when I was a kid, bought me formaldehyde. He kind of wanted me to be a science geek. So he encouraged me to pick up dead animals, dead birds, dead sea urchins and keep them in jars on my shelf. I'm really drawn to these models or these, these illustrations that kind of aestheticize death and make it seem a bit more abstract and, and beautiful and interesting. And then that just kind of expanded to include medical museum type artifacts as I learned more about those sorts of things. So what can visitors to the Morbid Anatomy Library find? I am really fond of like ecclesiastical images, so a lot of kind of um, saints and bell jars, insect specimens. You can also find a lot of cheap taxidermy. I have a lot of books on collectors and collecting, cabinets of curiosity, different books about art science, art medicine, memorial photography. So in here we have some post-death photographs. Yeah, these are called post-mortem photographs or memorial photography. And I found this book randomly at like an independent bookstore in my neighborhood right after college. And it, it's one of the first thing that really opened my mind or made me start to think about what about, about the fact that this was such a prevalent, that death was such a prevalent part of most cultures. So these are all photographs taken of people after they died um, in the 19th century and early 20th century. And as you can see, you know, the images are, are pretty shocking by today's standards. I'm, a lot of them are posed to look as alive as possible. Was this like a trend at the time? Was this something that was popular? Yeah, this was incredibly popular. It seems like almost a given that you would photograph a loved one when they died or memorialize them in some other way if it wasn't a photograph. A lot of children were dying at this time uh, for various reasons and there were very long exposure times, especially for early photography like these daguerreotypes. So in a way, dead people made a very good model. And also photography was pretty new at this point and often families didn't have the kind of money to pay for it. So this would be kind of their last chance. So who do we have here? This is um, an anatomical Venus by Clemente Sassini. She decants into, I think, 185 pieces or something like that. Many, many pieces. And you can see this one, we've got a string of pearls and like a beautiful, can't tell if that's a braid or just hair coming over. Real eyelashes, real eyebrows, the works. So is this created as a sort of educational thing to show where the organs are in the body? It is, and in fact, they're, they're still considered quite accurate, but at the same time, in my opinion, at least they're more than that. I mean, they're, they're gentlemen's collectibles. They're beautiful, sexualized women. Gentlemen's collectibles. I believe so. I mean, they, these were all men who were collecting these objects. This looks painful. What's going on here? Uh, well, as you can see by the label, this, um, this is a moulage depicting a face with impetigo. So medical moulage, basically, they would find someone who was sick uh, with skin. I mean, you can see why it would be a skin thing. Usually you take a cast of their face or their body part that's diseased and painted and add real hair to make it look as lifelike as possible. Which is, in a way is part of why these are such interesting historical objects too, is they show these extreme versions of disease that because with modern medicine we can either solve or we catch earlier, we don't really see anymore. So these in a way are kind of museums of what disease used to look like as well. It's a reminder that we have it pretty good these days. We seriously do. <laughs> In, in our culture especially, we're not really accustomed to having these artifacts of death on display. Why do you think that is? Well, it's interesting. I, I obviously think a lot about that. And I think, I think for every time period, there's something that's kept hidden. And if you look at the Victorian era, it was sex, you know? So you have all these kind of secret museums. So like, for example, the British Museum had a secret chamber where they kept all the pornographic, what we'd call pornographic objects. When they um, excavated Pompeii, they kept all the pornographic objects, again, in a secret museum that you had to have special credentials or a letter of introduction to go to. And I think that images of death are today's secret museum. They're just the thing we're not supposed to talk about, we're not supposed to think about. I think every culture has something, and why it's death now, I, I wish that there was some way that people did contemplate death in day-to-day -day life. <laughs>